Well, Journey into Self, that's the name of the film that uh, Carl and I did there. We uh, had done uh, this program on television, but uh, we only had time to work with these people on television just an hour a week. And so that's not very much time to get something intensive going. And so uh, we thought if we could do one over a weekend where we had people for 16 hours, together. Maybe we could build a, a real group experience that would be more intense and more illuminating. And so uh, we, we organized Bill McGaw, who was our communication director and as a television producer too, um, uh, was uh, instrumental in getting that program organized. He produced and directed it. And we, uh, we led a group of people uh, over uh, a weekend and uh, it did uh, provide some very uh, good moments. One of them, uh, in connection with a, uh, uh, one of them, uh, uh, one of the members uh, kind of broke, uh, kind of uh, became very close because he had real deal that he didn't have any friends and he was feeling really kind of bad. And, uh, and you could see he was in trouble. And one of our members, uh, a beautiful Eurasian, actually got up and walked over and put her arms around him and he burst into tears and, uh, and then uh, she sat back down. But then I noticed that the, the black woman that was sitting next to him uh, was, uh, was crying. And I said, what are those, what are those tears for? And, and she, she, she said, well, they're for me. And uh, I said, what's going on? And she, she said, well, when Raj, the Eurasian woman that got over me, when she did that, she said, I, of course, thought about, cared about him. He's sitting right next to me. And I, uh, I wanted to do that. But I couldn't, because I always have to think, Negro first. The way people use Negro then, this is, this is in 1968. Um, Negro first. Which uh, always makes me choke up whenever I see that film at that moment. And uh, so, Abraham Kaplan, the philosopher, was on our staff at the time, and we showed the staff just a little clip of this whole weekend, including that moment. And, and he said, you know, Dick, you should take that to uh, a friend of mine, Stanley Kramer, who's a famous film director and producer who did High Noon and a lot of other great films. And um, uh, so he called Stanley and arranged to us to go up there and show him that half hour. And uh, Stanley was sitting next to me and he reached over and said, Dick, that's the best piece of film I've ever seen. And he said, we'll take that and we'll edit it. I'll help you edit it and we'll win the Academy Award. And he didn't win, he never won the Academy Award because he, even with High Noon, you know, he didn't win. He said he thought, when he told me about High Noon, he said, I thought I was going to win it. And I was actually halfway down the aisle when they called out the name, but they called out Cecil B. DeMille instead of my name. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so we did work with him and uh, Bill McGaw uh, edited it and, uh, and it did win the Academy Award. Curiously, it didn't win that night. It wasn't when they opened the envelope. It was for a film that was done by Columbia Studios. But you see, in the, those days, you didn't have to see the film in order to vote on it. So if it was a big studio film, the studio would always win. win. And, and so uh, uh, it turned out that that one was entered fraudulently. And so, so a, a week later, uh, we got a call at the Western Behavioral Sciences to say, this is Greg Peck calling. And, uh, uh, Gregory Peck, you know, famous man, and he said he was the president of the academy of motion picture arts and science. He says, "I got an embarrassing situation here," <laughs> and so, and so he said, uh, 
the fact is that wasn't a uh, legal entry into this year, into this year. And uh, um, so the fact of the matter is yours was the winner for this year. So, so Bill went up and got the award uh, in a special ceremony. Uh, uh, so, but, uh, but uh, it's been, uh, it, it's been now, the way I view that, that film <clears throat> is what I call meta-professionalism. That is, it, it's, it's the ability to extend the reach and power of social scientists uh, and other professionals to be able to, to, because I've, I've been, the, I've seen the film and witnessed it being watched and used and the way it's used as training film as a, as a, 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 a sort of substitute uh, uh, film for therapy and, and as a, a way to stimulate therapy groups and so forth. Uh, it has, without our being present, it has given therapeutic moments to literally hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people that we never could have touched before. And uh, so that's what I call meta-professionalism. It's the ability to use volunteers, to be able to use the mass media, to be able to use new social technologies, to be able to uh, work with paraprofessionals and to work with groups and you know on and on and on. Th that's the way you extend your powers, and we don't do enough of that, as far as I can see. We all still are locked into the one-on-one -on -one relationship, an hour a week, you know, that kind of thing, which is a beautiful relationship. I don't knock it. I use it myself, but uh, but the fact of the matter is, this: it makes it impossible for us to touch the real problems. Uh, you know, a quarter of the world's population has psychological difficulties, and we're even better at dealing with the people who don't have psychological difficulties. And when you think about that, that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pity that we're uh, totally unable to address that issue, just as architecture is unable to address it, and just as education is on that, and on and on and on. We're, we, we don't figure out how to do what we do in a meta-professional way that really addresses what would surely should be, if it isn't, it should be our calling, our, our, our interest. And uh, so I'm always looking for the meta-professional answer to, uh, to some issue. And there are many who have done it before. We, we, we lowered the rate of violence in, and uh, robberies in 7-Eleven in, uh, convenience stores by 40% by using robbers as our research assistants. And we found out how to case one of those joints, and then we designed it so that it would, so we designed the stores, so that, and there's tens of thousands of those stores, well, there's all kinds of those stores now. And they all now do what we suggested, and they lowered their robberies by 40%. And there, it was the money that we wasn't worried about so much as the violence that, that, that it sometimes accompanied it. So that's what you can do with meta professionalism, and I think about that. And that would be something I'd like to do.